hey everyone welcome back to my channel so this video was based on a specific request and this topic guys urinary incontinence is high yield and can be very confusing actually so today i'm gonna do three questions with you guys i'm gonna show you exactly how to differentiate the three types of urinary incontinence so let's get started all right guys so i'm gonna give you a little short scheme at first so you can kind of flow with me uh, so I wanted to simplify it like this. There's two muscles that can go wrong with the types of urinary incontinence we're going to talk about. Uh, either the detrusor muscle can go wrong or the external urethral sphincter can go wrong. So if the external urethral sphincter is not functioning properly, then uh, you're not going to keep your incontinence and that can lead to stress incontinence. If the detrusor is over functioning overactive you're gonna get urge incontinence if it's underactive as in it's inhibited then you're gonna get overflow incontinence this is just the little scheme before we go into the questions i'm gonna explain this further okay guys but i just want you to put this picture in your mind all right so the first question like i always tell you guys you're gonna read the last two lines first uh, can it almost sums up all what's going on so external genitalia examination shows leakage of a small amount of urine from the urethra when the patient is asked to cough it already gave it away normal exam with the normal limits which of the following is the most likely cause of her condition so a woman who um who's who gets leakage of urine when she's coughing right away it almost gave it away guys that this is stress incontinence so uh, normally I told you guys that the external urethral sphincter keeps voluntary continence uh, so that the urine doesn't leak but when she's coughing this increased intra-abdominal pressure because of the coughing kind of beats the tone of her external urethral sphincter which makes urine leak now why is this and why is it more common in women this is because a 48 year old woman comes to the office six month history voluntary passage a few drops of urine from sneezing or coughing again proving it she has recently been leaking more urine with minimal activity which has been embarrassing so on she has no weakness numbness or fecal incontinence here guys it's important to exclude spinal cord lesions which can present this way but it's not because of a spinal cord lesion uh, she has a history of hypertension type 2 diabetes she's married has four children Okay, guys, you got to understand that this is more common in women and particularly in multi-paris women. Because, uh, you can see here that vaginal delivery is a risk factor. This is because pregnancy leads to pelvic floor muscle weakness and childbirth itself can injure the muscle, can injure the external urethral sphincter or the pudendal nerve, which innervates this muscle. And so it makes it weaker. But this doesn't show... Uh, in her 20s or 30s when she had the children rather when she becomes like in her late 40s this starts showing she starts complaining simply because of estrogen deficiency um, which leads to weakening of pelvic floor muscles it's the pelvic floor muscle guys that controls the external urethral sphincter essentially this is the whole thing about external urethral sphincter is how strong the pelvic floor muscles are to keep the tone and to beat the pressure in the bladder or intra-abdominal pressure so urine wouldn't leak. And therefore, any weakness in these muscles, whether because of childbirth or because of estrogen deficiency, will lead to loss of this continence, this voluntary control and stress incontinence. And so what is the mechanism behind her condition, urethral sphincter dysfunction? Now, the other causes, guys, I'm going to discuss them later with you. Uh, detrusor overactivity. I've already mentioned this before we, uh, in urgent kindness. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, but this is not the case here. Detrusor overactivity is seen with upper motor neuron lesions. Uh, diabetic autonomic neuropathy is a distractor because he said she has diabetes 
but this would lead to overflowing kinds. It wouldn't be associated with coughing or with any form of stress or stress on the bladder, you know. Uh, urethral obstruction from a tumor or detrusor inactivity, all these B, C, and D guys represent causes of overflow incontinence where there is something wrong with detrusor muscle contraction. She has nothing wrong with contraction of the muscle to empty the bladder. She has something wrong with controlling the continence at the level of the external urethral sphincter, voluntary control. And that's because of her uh, vaginal delivery and because she is a 48 year old woman late 40s some sort of estrogen deficiency so the giveaway here guys is the um, leakage with stress sneezing or coughing or laughing even okay all right moving on to the next question I'm gonna sum it up for you guys in the end I'm gonna give you another scheme in the end let's just go through the questions now so I'm going to read the last two lines and MRI the spine reveals a new demyelinated lesion in the mid thoracic spinal cord which of the following abnormalities will most likely be found on this patient's urodynamic studies okay guys so a demyelinating lesion means it's multiple sclerosis but one thing I need to highlight before we read the whole question is mid thoracic Guys, we know that the spinal reflex for urinary incontinence is in the sacral spinal cord. And so anything above this level, any lesion above this level is an upper motor neuron lesion. And you all know the characteristics of upper motor, motor neuron lesions, right? So let's read the rest of the question. A 45-year-old man comes to the ER due to urinary incontinence. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis a year ago after he developed transit acute vision loss. Uh, a few weeks ago, he began having difficulty in his balance and had several episodes of urinary incontinence. Patient's walk has improved but continues to urinate involuntarily, has noted increased urinary frequency, and cannot control the urge to urinate. <laughs> it's all, almost gave it away, guys. But even if the question doesn't say urge to urinate, you're still going to get that right because... When I finish on examination, the patient has mild spastic paraparesis, increased reflexes, bilateral Babinski sign, and a thoracic sensory level. You know what that means? He's giving you clues that this there's an upper motor neuron lesion. Guys, the trusor muscle, just like any other muscle in the body, is under inhibitory central nervous system control by upper motor neurons right and so loss of this because of a demyelinating lesion leads to hypertonia hyperreflexia and all these stuff related to upper motor neuron lesions right and so before the bladder fully distends the muscle kind of prematurely contracts and so once there is only little amount of urine as it's still filling the muscle just contracts quickly on its own before the patient is ready that is why it's called urging incontinence. it's hyperactivity of the muscle or detrusor overactivity and we've seen here the neurogenic disorders is one of the risk factors so there is a problem here with distensibility the muscle is perfectly fine in fact it's overactive because of loss of inhibition so what would you most likely see on this patient's urodynamic uh, exam will be bladder hypertonia just like there's going to be hypertonia in his limbs as well just like he has babinski all of these are characteristics of upper motor neuron lesions and the same applies for the detrusor now delayed bladder emptying is seen with uh overflow incontinence it's not the case here guys and large residual volume of urine also seen with overflow incontinence i'm going to talk about that in the next question um, elevated urethral pressure is seen with overflow as well so bladder hypertonia is the correct answer guys and again remember mid thoracic means above the sacral spinal cord then it is upper motor neuron all right the last question guys um, 42 year old man with a long history of type 1 diabetes Note here, long history of type 1 diabetes. I'm going to tell you why he's, say, he's saying this. 
uh, comes to the office due to frequent involuntary loss of urine. For the past several months, he's been having difficulty starting and maintaining urine stream. In the last three weeks, he had two episodes of nocturnal aneurysis, a multiple daytime episodes of uncontrolled voiding without any sensation of a full bladder. His other medical problems include chronic kidney disease and gastroparesis. I'm sure you already got the answer now, guys. Someone with a long history of type 1 diabetes is very likely to develop autonomic neuropathy, just like he can develop peripheral neuropathy of the peripheral nerves. He can also develop autonomic neuropathy of the autonomic nerves. That is why he's giving you a clue here, gastroparesis. Gastroparesis is another form of autonomic neuropathy. Okay, so you can pick up on this clue and figure out what's going on. Now, without any sensation of a full bladder, this neuropathy involves the afferent nerves first. So the person doesn't feel that their bladder is full all through the day. So it keeps filling, it keeps filling, and he doesn't feel until it overfills so much that its pressure beats the pressure of the urethral sphincter and it just overflows without the patient feeling. That's the problem. Later on, when uh, autonomic neuropathy involves the efferent nerves as well, with the efferent nerves that uh, innervate the detrusor muscle, the patient also cannot contract the muscle. So even when they're in the bathroom and they want to uh, start and maintain a stream by contracting their detrusor muscle, they cannot do that because there is a problem with efferent innervation. There is impaired detrusor contractility as well. So he's not filling his bladder, so it keeps filling and keeps filling until it opens by pressure, overflow. That's why he's getting nocturnal aneurysis, all this stuff. And at the same time, efferent affection of the autonomic nerves makes him unable to contract the muscle or start and maintain a stream all right therefore what would you most likely see guys because he's not fully emptying the bladder because the detrusor is under active okay he cannot fully empty the bladder some urine remains or some residual volume remains after voiding. This is called increased post-void residual volume. All right, guys? And large prostate and rectal exam was not mentioned anyways. And um, and large prostate and rectal exam will not lead to loss of sensation of a full bladder. This picture is more in line with diabetic neuropathy, especially that there is a reason why the examiner told you this patient has a long history of type 1 diabetes, right? Um, loss of sensation in the perineal area would be seen with spinal cord lesions, which also lead to overflowing continence, by the way. But there was no mention here of any spinal cord injury. In addition, it will also show fecal incontinence. But this is not mentioned here as well. Lower extremity hyperreflexia would be seen in the last question, guys, if you remember, the one with multiple sclerosis. Yes, we've seen this, but this would lead to urge incontinence. However, this is overflow incontinence. So to sum up, guys, here's the three types. If you look on the big picture, you will notice that in both stress incontinence or urge incontinence, there is nothing wrong with contraction of the detrusor muscle, right? It's either contracting normally, like here, or it's hyperactive. There's nothing wrong with contraction. There is nothing wrong with fully emptying the bladder, which is why the bladder is of normal size. And because of this normal contraction, the post-void residual volume is low or normal. Like essentially, it completely empties. There is no residue, right? However, here with overflowing cottons, this is the only one you can see a big bladder overfilled uh, because of impaired detrusive contractility, as in... Uh, autonomic neuropathy so it just fills up fills up fills up or because of bladder outlet obstruction which would be seen with bph essentially the urine can't make it to the outside so it keeps filling keeps filling all right guys so this is the difference between uh the three types of urine incontinence remember post void residual volume is only high with overflowing incontinence i hope this video makes sense guys let me know what you think in the comments all the best guys